Okay, good day everyone. In this video, we are going to create the dumbbell that you can see on your screen. So like any other projects, let's begin by creating a sketch on the front plane. So I'm gonna click here on the upper left corner of my screen and then select the front plane. Let's start off with a vertical line with a length of 12.5 millimeters. So click this icon, click the origin, drag it upward, and then type 12.5 millimeters, and also construct a horizontal line above it with a length of 60 millimeters. Meanwhile, at the bottom, let's draw a 75 millimeter horizontal line which is succeeded by a 25 millimeter vertical line. Now, in the end, let's close this figure by connecting these endpoints. So, let's construct a line here, and the other endpoint is here. So, this is actually the upper quarter of the front view of our handle. Now, there are other ways of creating this dumbbell, but the simplest method that I can think of as of the moment is the one that we just did when we created this cross-section and the one that we are about to do, which is to revolve this cross-section about the x-axis. So, let us make use of the function revolve, which is located among the create selection over here. So, I'm gonna click this icon. And as you can see, it automatically detected the, draw detected the drawing that we wish to revolve. So it is because of the fact that it is the only sketch that we have so far. And then Fusion 360 will ask us to select an axis of revolution, which in this case is going to be the x-axis. Now as you can see, we now have the half of the handle of our dumbbell. So our strategy is to complete the first half of our dumbbell. And then we are going to use the mirror function to easily create the other half. But that method is for later. In the meantime, let's create the hexagonal weight on the right side of the handle. So click on create sketch. And then select the rightmost plane that we have so far. I'm going to click on the right side of this box on the upper right corner of the screen. I'm going to navigate through create hover down and then point to polygon and then as you can see there are many selections that you can use in order to draw this polygon but in this time we're going to use the circumscribed polygon this will then ask us to select a center of the polygon that we wish to create so what i'm going to do is to select this point over here drag it upward and then type in 60 millimeters Press enter to continue and then there we have our hexagon. We can just exit the sketch and then use this cross section because we want to extrude it at a length of maybe around 65 millimeters. So select this circular figure over here and then also select the remaining parts of the hexagon. We can drag this arrow or we can just type in 65 millimeters. And for the sake of future convenience, what we're going to do here is to change the operation to new body. Later, I will show you how convenient it will be if we change it to new body as opposed to join. And then there you go. The next thing that we should do is to create the bevels on the edges of this hexagonal weight. Now, what we're going to do is hide the half handle that we have over here. So we can focus on manipulating the details of the hexagonal weight. Click on chamfer, which is under the modify section. Click here, so we have a front view. And then select the edges that we want to apply chamfers to. The easiest way to select these edges is to left click, and then hold your mouse, drag it down, and then release. And then do the same process again on the other side. So there you go. The desired edges are now selected. We can just type in 15 millimeters for the chamfer. So imagine if we used the operation join a while ago, we 
wouldn't be able to hide the body here and we wouldn't be able to select all these edges and then that would be a lot of work for us to do so that is one of the conveniences that we can experience when we use the operation new body as opposed to the operation join the problem with the current design that we have is that its edges are still sharp so let us proceed by applying rounded edges on these entities of the hexagonal part click on this icon that says fill it and do the same thing to select the edges like we did before afterwards select these additional edges that you can see type in 5 millimeters as the fillet radius and then finally hit enter now you can see that we have rounded edges Upon showing half of the handle again, what we want to do next is to add knurls on it in order to improve the grip that we have when using this dumbbell for workout purposes. Now let's start this by creating a coil that will start from this cross section and then end all the way to the other end. We're gonna click create, navigate down and select coil, and notice that it will first ask us for a plane where the coil will start. Let's click on this one and then create the circle that the coil will initially follow through. So this one has a diameter of 25 millimeters. Make sure that the type is in the mode revolution in height. So we will be entering the number of revolutions that we want for our coil to undergo, as well as the height or the distance by which this coil will span through. Now I'm gonna make this to have one fifth of a revolution. So I'm gonna input 0.2 over here and the height be equal to negative 55 millimeters. So the direction of propagation of the coil will be flipped on the other side. We want the cross section of the coil to be triangular and we also want it to pierce through the internal of this object. So make sure that this one over here is triangular internal. Now let's make this section size be equal to around two millimeters. And also, make sure that this operation should be cut. So essentially what we're doing is, we're removing material on the surface. Afterwards, hit OK. Next, we're basically repeating this process, only this time we want the direction of rotation to be the other way around. So if you first have a counterclockwise coil, then we will create another coil that is clockwise, and vice versa. So again, let's go to create, select coil, and then do the same thing that we did a while ago. The only difference is that I'm going to click this button over here in order to flip the direction of rotation. So let's do this. Now you can see these two helices that pierces through the surface of the handle. We want to recreate these features multiple times, and instead of repeating this process again and again and again, let's make Fusion 360 do the job for us by using the function circular pattern. Click create, hover down to pattern, select circular pattern, and then select these two icons in the timeline that pertains to the features we previously created. Next, we need to select the axis of repetition. And you actually have the option to click this X axis over here, but as you can see, it's difficult to do so because the axis is blocked by the cylinder. What we're gonna do is select this circle instead. Fusion 360 will be revolving our pattern along this circle. How many copies do we want to make? It really depends on how strong your computer is, but I'm gonna type 45 because we want it to be as many as possible, but inputting a number a little bit beyond 45 is actually gonna make my computer lag undesirably. Hit enter, 
and then let's wait for the computer to calculate and load. There you go. You have a nice snarl on your handle that is supposedly to improve your grip when you use it for a workout. What we're going to do next, as I mentioned earlier, is to copy these bodies using the mirror tool. So on this side over here, press Ctrl, and then select these two objects. Then go all the way to Create, navigate down, and click Mirror over here. It's going to prompt us to select a plane that we want to mirror these objects with respect to. Evidently, we're going to use this plane over here. And then hit enter. Let's apply the finishing touches by modifying the appearance of our bodies. Click modify. Hover down to appearance. And then select the desired appearance that we want to use. In this case, we want the handle to be polished stainless steel, while the weights to be painted dark gray with metal flake. Click on the folder beside metal. And then click this folder beside stainless. Left click and hold on stainless steel polished. And then drag it to the body over here. Meanwhile, let's go to paint and then find metal flake over here. So do the same process but this time let's use paint metal flake dark gray as stated in, in this option. There you go. The 12 kilogram dumbbell has already been created. So how do I know that it's actually around 12 kilograms? Fusion 360 has built-in functions that it automatically calculates the mass, the surface area, the volume, and other properties of the object that we created. Simply select all the bodies that we have. So these four bodies that we have so far. Right click. Select properties. Wait for it to load because it's calculating. And then there you have it. It says that the mass is around 1.2 times 10 raised to 4 grams, which is around 12 kilograms. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you do and if you want more videos, kindly hit like and subscribe.